So I just recently opened an Etsy shop. I'm pretty bummed because I haven't been able to sell a thing. Of course I started researching and I went through the web and everyone kept saying that your pictures had to be really good, right? Of course then I went back to YouTube and searched for tutorials and tips in product photography and then this was where my ADD kicked in because ADD. A puppy. Yeah. And this is where I just ended up looking at bokeh videos for I don't know what reason because well ADD. For those who don't know what bokeh is, it's Japanese in photography when your light source is really far away and out of focus um, it gives like a sort of like confetti like effect to it. That's called bokeh. And it's really cool and you can give it any shape you want. Like the shape through where the light source comes in through your lens, then that's the shape that this confetti-like lights are gonna have. My ADD and my OCD came in together, and I was like, well, I've got a silhouette machine. I can do a little add-on to my camera lens, because I've got a DSLR, and I did this sort of like box that will cover my lens, and I did cut some discs that will go in my little box. I don't know if I, I don't know how to call this. That's how I got some really cool bokeh effects effects. If you want to see how I achieved this using my split machine, keep watching! So, this is what I did. So I started off by taking the measurements of my lens. This is a wide aperture lens, and so diameter and height. The height won't change that much. And once in Illustrator, I'm going to use these measurements and I'm going to use a polygon, a 10-sided polygon, to cover the front of my lens. And once I have that, then I'm going to draw one of the sides, since they're all going to be the same. So I just, I'm, I'm using my guides, my smart guides in Illustrator, to make sure everything falls in perfectly, and it's the right size and height. And once I have that, I'm going to add some tabs so I can glue every single side together. So I use the rectangle tool and then I taper that a bit using the scale tool, pulling those anchor points in. I do adjust the side a bit. I'm going to show you why in a bit. And I merge everything together and then I'm just going to create nine more copies out of this using the center of my polygon as the pivot or axis point. And then I merge everything together. I do need to redraw the polygon because I need that for score lines. And then I need, of course, I need score lines in my tabs too. So I will create copies out of that too. And now I'm gonna draw the hole where the light is gonna come in. So that's the overall shape. Good. Now, for the discs, I'm going to offset this little circle a bit. Then that's going to cover the hole. And I'm going to um, add some slits so I can interchange those little discs with different shapes. I'm just going to scale this a bit because it's maybe a bit too big. There you go, and now I can just move this to the side. I don't, I don't need that anymore. And this is gonna be one of my discs. At this point, I just started drawing whatever shape I felt like. So uh, I did draw a heart, a star. I don't know why, but I drew a leaf. <laughs> and a triangle because, well, hipsters. I did use my method to export my file. I'm gonna leave the card so for those who don't know how to do that, well, you can learn. Um, once I imported my template to Illustrator, I mean to the Sweat Studio, I did ungroup my shape because I wanted to change some of the lines to be score lines. So my polygon should be a score line. And well, my tabs need to have score lines, not cut lines. So I'm gonna change that too. And of course I will cut that using my select machine. Lovely. 
Now I used very thin paper, so like Bond's paper is uh, like three points. I would suggest for you to use at least nine points because it's really frustrating. You feel like you're gonna tear everything off. But I mean, do please use black paper because that doesn't allow that much lighting and that's what you're going for. So glue the sides, there you go. Let that, allow that to dry off a bit. And then you can go ahead and place it on your camera. And there you go, ta-da! So this is how you achieve the bulky effect. Um, use a tripod, that gets the best results. Place your subject near the camera and your string lights, preferably string lights, on the very back as far as you can get them. And this is the effect you get at the end. Isn't it lovely? And the leaf, look, that turned out to be really cool. Of course you can uh, draw your own bokeh box, but if you just want to save some time, I'm giving away the file in my website. You might as well just go there and get the file for free. If you want to show off your own creation, what bokeh effects you achieved, please share. And if you've got any other questions, if you've got any other tutorials, ideas, or hacks that I could do, please share, comment below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe and share. Bye. What?